is open, the Yukon locker room remains open as well. We're joined now by Alabama head coach Nate Oates and Alabama Crimson Tide players Mark Sears and Grant Nelson. Coach Oates, we'll ask you to begin with an opening statement. Then we'll look for questions first for Mark and Grant. Go ahead, Coach. I uh, first just want to thank our guys for getting this uh, school to the Final Four for the first time in school history. We, we had an unbelievable run, and these guys kind of got us over to home to get there. Uh, so can't say enough about the leadership of these guys, particularly in the last few weeks. So unfortunate that, you know, it ended tonight, but, you know, we played arguably the best team in the country. I mean, UConn's top five in offense and defense. It showed tonight. I thought our guys did a good job staying in there, you know, not giving up big runs, but, you know, after we tied it there in the second half, I think they went on an 8 0 run after that, if I remember right, and that was it. And it was pretty quick. And they're good. I mean, there's, you know, like Danny says, they're close to being ball proof. I mean, it, when you're that great on both sides of the ball, you out rebound teams. You know, this, you know, the official box score had us down for zero fast break points. It's the first time all year that that's happened to us. You know, we're, we're used to getting out in transition. This game ended up being a 64 possessions, which is a lot slower than we'd like, but we, we kind of know that they play a lot slower, you know, but they got out in transition on us a little bit and they hit a three in transition. They got that dunk early in the, in the second half. And, you know, we, we let it get away from us a little bit, but uh, UConn's great. You know, it's going to be a great matchup Monday night. Our, our, our guys were really good from the stretch in the NCAA tournament. We just came up a little short tonight, but we came up short against a great team. Thank you, Coach. We're looking for questions for Mark Sears and Grant Nelson at this time. We'll open things up with Zach in the front. Uh, Zach Brazil in your post. Mark, it, at halftime, I think you were 8 of 11 from three, and um, you were out shooting them, and you were hanging tough on the glass, and you were still losing. It, is that disheartening at all, knowing you probably played as well as you can in that first half and just kind of speaks to just how tough they are? Uh, yeah, they're a really great team. And, you know, we had turned the ball over and they made us pay for it. You know, they, uh, we turned the ball over and they kept really capitalized off of it. Continuing with questions for Grant or Mark. If you have a question for Grant or Mark, please raise your hand. Microphone Stewart will head in your direction. We have one on the left side. Yeah, for or Devin Henderson, WCSN, for Mark and Grant, what kind of specific things on the court that you guys see from UConn's defense that kind of slowed down your high-powered offense? Grant, can you take that one first, please, and then let Mark. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're solid all around, and they have a really good rim protector, so I feel like uh, we didn't really attack the rim with the physicality and, like, the patience we should have. Um, and, I mean, the, yeah, they're just a great team, solid all around on the defensive end, so... It's tough to get things going, and I uh, just give them a lot of credit. Mark? Yeah, to go with what he said, you know, they're a great uh, great team overall, and they did a great job of being physical with us on our drives, and they have a great rim protector that's sitting in the paint. Thanks, guys. Let's go to the right side. For both players, Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham, you guys are the leaders on the team. What was the message after? I know the loss just happened, but, you know, you guys got to the Final Four for the first time in program history. And, again, we'll ask Grant to take that question first. Yeah, I mean, uh, great group. Uh, I mean, I, f I feel like we all loved each other. It was, it was tough seeing guys like Aaron Estrada play their last college basketball game. Uh, but, I mean, we just we just told each other we made history. Uh, it didn't end the way we wanted to. But, uh, I mean, we, we, can't, we can't hang our heads on this season. And, uh, I mean, we just got to kind of use this game as motivation going into the next year. Up front on the left side. Front left microphone, please. Grant, read. Grant, you had a chance to play against Zach Eady early in the season, Donovan Klingon tonight. Curious if you could give us your insight on the differences between the two and how you think they match up. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think they match up pretty well. Um, I mean, it, they both draw a lot of fouls. Uh, they're tough to play against as a team, really. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think it'll be a good matchup. It's 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 tough tough guarding both of them, but I mean, if you put them up against each other, it's it's really just who's more physical and who can foul less. I don't know. Probably, I don't know. Probably equal. Up front on the left side. Question for Mark. I'm Josh Wines with ESPN. You guys were eight for eleven from three in the first half, three for twelve in the second half. What was the difference behind we? Difference behind the arc in the second half. Uh, I say they did a they did a better job of running us off the three point line. You know, even when we would try to create separation, they were right there to run us off the line. So I say they did a great job of doing that. Continue with questions if there are any for Grant or Mark. If you have a question for the student athletes from Alabama, please raise your hand. With no more questions, we'd like to congratulate Grant and Mark on a great season and thank you guys for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room right now, which remains open until 9 p.m. Questions for Coach Oates, please raise your hand. We'll start up front. Ryan Hennessy, MEC 13 in Birmingham. Coach, I know it just ended, but I'm talking to your athletic director, the fans. It seems like this is the beginning of something special, and this isn't just a one-time thing for Alabama. What's the message to the fans that, you know, after this run? Yeah, I, I want to thank them. They, they've really supported us since we've gotten there. You know, they've gotten behind us. When I took the job, a lot of people said it was a football school, but, you know, there's a large contingent of basketball fans. There's no reason you can't be both. Florida, you know, if, we'll see if UConn wins it on Monday. If they go ahead and win it on Monday, I think they'll be the first team since Florida to win back-to-backs. Florida's a pretty good football school. They became a pretty good basketball school. I think we proved you can be good at both. Uh, they're good at a lot of sports at Alabama. And They've been they've been great to us since we've been here. So I, I'm glad that I was a small part of bringing the Alabama fan base some joy through the basketball team and making a Final Four. But while it was great, and I want to you know thank them and thank our players for getting us here, we're, we're not finished. We'd like to get back here and win this whole thing. And I think you know that's what our goal is going to be. We're going to aim to get back here. We're going to aim to get back here and win the final game and. We just got to keep knocking at the door and, you know, ask for them to continue to support us like the way they've been, and we'll, we'll continue to put a winning product on the floor for them. On the left side, second row, Adam. Great. Nate, Adam Zagori, congratulations on a great season. I know you're close with the Hurleys. What does it kind of say about this family that Bob Sr. could have two sons, each with back-to-back -back national championships? one as a player, one as a coach, if they win Monday. Just can you talk a little bit about the family legacy and maybe having the two of them do it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy when you say it like that. I didn't even think about that. But, I, yeah, obviously Bobby's arguably the best point guard to ever play college basketball and unbelievable leader. And, you know, he led his team to back-to-back -back national championships. And I learned a lot from him and my two years being an assistant. And he's – you know, he's competitive, fiery, but his IQ is a point guard to where he sit, the way he sees things. So, and now if Danny can go do it as a coach, they, they obviously learn a lot of basketball in that family. So I, I I'm, was able to learn just a little bit of it from uh, Bobby when I was with him for two years, and I still talk to Danny and watch his teams frequently, watch Bobby's teams frequently. And, yeah, I mean, we, we've played both UConn and Purdue, and, both really good you know they both pose problems but it would be incredible if uh, the same family had back-to-back -back national championships a few years apart all the way up front left side Nate you mentioned this UConn team plays uh, or Dan mentioned that you this UConn team typically plays slower and you did as well I'm curious though with the five starters they have all potential NBA players how difficult of a matchup is it to have, you know, five guys who could be drafted this year in the NBA? 
Uh, and, and how did that change how you had to scheme your strategy of being high pace? Yeah, I mean, we wanted the pace higher. Shoot, they, they kind of won out. 64 possessions is not ideal for us. You know, they, it's hard to speed them up, though. They don't turn the ball over. They're tough. They're physical. They, the, their sets take a long time to run. And then, you know, when you give up 12 old boards, all of a sudden they take 20, 25 seconds off the clock, shoot, and then get a rebound and take another 15 seconds off the clock, you know. So it's, you know, we get it. We had to do a lot better job on a lot of things, but they, you know, they impose their will on a lot of teams. And in some regards, they impose their will on us tonight, especially with the pace of play. I kept getting our guys to try to push it a little faster. And, you know, there's, it seemed like there was always bodies in front of us. You know, they did a great job in transition. I, the only breakaway transition bucket, you know, was the one dunk they had. I, I don't know that this official box score is exactly right. We'll have to look at ours because we did have some fast break points. We had the three in transition, the market. Grant Nelson got that dunk. That, to me, that's a transition bucket. So we got a few transition opportunities, but not nearly like we've been used to and not what we needed to to beat a team like this. And obviously they do a great job keeping teams out of transition. If you have a question for Coach Oates, please raise your hand. One more on the right side. Coach, was there a, a, a tactic that you wanted more threes to get up during this game, or were you kind of happy with the way you guys played with that? I mean, we knew they were going to try to run us off, be physical. Uh, you know, we needed, you know, Pringle does a great job getting shooters freed up. We, you know, we don't really put him down in the paint where Klingon can just hang out in the paint. Klingon still ended up with four blocks. You know, he found his way to the paint too much, in my opinion. But we were trying to have Nick set more screens. You know, Grant hit the one three. You know, it would have been nicer. Maybe we could have got him a few more pick and pop threes to pull Klingon out of the lane. But no, I mean, yeah, 23 is not ideal. We'd rather. Be pushing more like mid thirties on threes, but they were obviously going to try to take take us off the line. And you know, when they take it off the line, we drove it in. They, they did a better job forcing us to take more non rim twos than we probably have all year too. And we took seventeen of our fifty eight field goal attempts came from two point range that weren't at the rim, and we were five of seventeen on those, which that, that's not ideal. You know, we you know, we only you know. Almost a third of our shots ended up being non-rim twos. So that's not how we typically play. But they're a great defensive team, and he know he's a smart coach. They know the uh, numbers like we do, and that that's what they want teams to take. And they forced us to take way too many of them. Is there a final question? We'll finish up front on the left side. Have you talked to Grant at all? Do you have any sense of what his future holds um, with the fifth year of eligibility remaining? And whether his NBA draft stock that's certainly risen during the tournament um, is impacting that? Yeah, I'm sure his draft stock's risen in the tournament, you know, particularly how he played against uh, was it Carolina, I believe, is where he had 24, 12, and 5. I think he's one of four players in the history of the tournament to do that against a, a single digit seed. I think somebody told me it was him, Shaq, Tim Duncan, and Channing Fry, so it's pretty good company. So. You know, that game followed up by this one, you know, 19 and 15. Uh, you know, uh, his stack's risen. I guess we, we're going to have to sit down and evaluate how much it's risen. Will You know, will he get drafted? Where would he get drafted? Does he want You know, because I'd love to have him back. I know that. But I've always said you do what's right by the, by the player, by the person. And if, if he's got a great situation and – makes most sense for him not to come back. I'm all for it. You know, Noah Clowney, nobody thought he'd be back at, or be gone after one year and ends up going 21st in the draft last year. So if Grant's stock rose enough to where it makes sense he leaves, I'll be the happiest guy in the world for him. If he uh, feels like he needs another year of college, I'll open him or welcome him back with open arms. I'd love to coach him for another year, but we'll, we'll have to figure that all out in the next, uh, you know, month or two or however long it takes to figure that out. We want to thank Coach Oates, and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for your coverage, you guys from Alabama.